Now, Heavenly Father, as we bow in your presence today, thank you for the great teacher, the greatest teacher in the kingdom, the blessed Holy Spirit. Make my tongue as a pen of a skillful writer, so that I may write indelibly upon the hearts and minds of those that hear, that are here, that will hear by way of live streaming or television. We thank you they will be transformed to become the epistles of Christ. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise and worship. Team, God richly bless you. Well, blessed Good Friday to every one of you here this morning. And then also we welcome all those that are watching by way of live streaming. We're honored to have you join together with us as we worship God together. Let's give them a big hand. Praise the Lord Jesus. I want to continue to share with you about kingdom faith. That's what our theme is for the month of April, maybe for even May. We'll see how it, it really goes on. Galatians chapter 2 from verse 18 to verse 21. Galatians chapter 2 from verse 18 to verse 21. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself to me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Wow. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Praise the Lord uh, for his word. We have been looking at some parables. And just to recap, we saw that faith works like a seed. So the deposit of faith that God gives in your heart needs to be planted. But you plant your faith by you speaking what you believe. Then faith works like a servant, we saw. It's a multi-tasked servant. It's a faith servant. You've got to actually see that God gave you a servant as a king. When Christ came into your heart and life, he came in with the measure of faith. And that faith will work like a servant for you. But that servant needs to be instructed, needs to be given a job description. So we see that when you speak words of God, your faith gets sold. That's the first parable. But when you speak the words of God, you instruct your servant faith to actually work with you. Very powerful. So you need to have that mentality, that belief within you, that you are speaking, but you're actually in giving a faith instruction. You are speaking and you are actually planting your faith to produce a harvest. And so you, you think like that all the time. You just don't think that you are doing it because it's faith that is doing it for you. And so you link your life to operate in the faith of God. Whatever you do, you want to do it through Christ, in Christ, and through the faith that Christ gives you. If you just do it by human intellect, you're going to go into the flesh. 
But if you understand that the word of God that you speak is spirit and faith is a spiritual force. And God gives us spiritual forces that we may live our godly life. You cannot live it without faith. The just shall live by, by faith. With that laid in, we're looking at our text now because your lives get built. We are getting built. You are being built the house of God. The word of God is building you up. And Paul is saying, if I build again the things which are destroyed, I become a sinner. I become a transgressor. So we want to look at what did the cross accomplish that got destroyed? Because if you can clearly define what the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ accomplished, then you know that that is what was destroyed and you're not prepared to build with what was destroyed. Because if you build with what Christ has accomplished, putting out of the way, destroying, then you become a sinner. You become a transgressor. So if you need to be clear in your life how this faith operates. So when he says, for I through the law am dead to the law. So you died even to the law when you got crucified. Why did you die to the law? Because the law was a schoolmaster to bring you to Christ. The law, with all those ordinances, was to make you guilty so you can know you need a savior. When you know you need a savior, then you receive Jesus into your heart and life. And then when Jesus is in your heart and faith is in your heart, then you live by Christ in you and not by the law that made you guilty. This is the dispensation of the Spirit, not the dispensation of the law. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So we are under a dispensation of grace and truth. And we're not living by outward instructions. We're living by the inward leading of the Holy Spirit. If you live by the law, you will continually fail. Because the law was never given by God to us to make us righteous. It's Christ who makes us righteous. You see, even in the natural... The law is for the guilty people. You don't have to be frightened when you see a police van passing your house if you are innocent. But my always kebengu, uboni van ye po isi make the genya avu sab. And that's why the Bible says the wicked flee when no man pursues him. So that's what the law does. You, you see, you don't have to be afraid when the robot turns red. You only got to be afraid if you cross that robot. So that, that law is to keep the, the wicked people in place, not the righteous people. We have been made righteous, and the Lord now leads us. So we want to see what has the cross of Christ accomplished. Christ died. What does it mean Christ died? It means some things came to an end. Death brings an end. And something new. So when Christ died, some things came to an end. If you build with those things that came to an end, then you become like someone who is not saved, even though you're saved. Because he's talking <coughs> to saved people. He's talking to the church. He is saying, 
that I'm crucified with Christ. He said, I'm dead to the law. He says, I don't live by instructions anymore. Nobody has to tell me what to do. I got the Lord in my life. I, I'm born again. I, my conscience is clean. I, I know what to do. And I follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now when you live like that, you start building your life. Then things that you couldn't do, you start doing them by faith. It just works like that. You cannot live. Can we just hang on a little bit? We'll see just now if it continues worrying. We cannot live by faith and live by the law at the same time. That doesn't work. You either live in Moses' era or you live in Christ's era. So we're not there in the old covenant. We're in the new covenant. So the covenant of God is activated by faith. So what came to an end? Very important. When Jesus died, what did he die for? First John, John 1, 29, when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin. Singular. Not sins. Jesus did die for sins. But there was a main root that he, he, he dealt with. One sin. Sin. It encompasses every other sin. But you've got to look at the root of that sin. And that root is that Adam changed lords. Adam committed high treason. Instead of eating of the tree of life, which was Christ, because he needed the life of Christ, he ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So it works like this. When you start eating of knowledge... You eat some good, but there's evil mixed up with that good. Poison in what you're eating. And then everything becomes poisonous. So you cannot live by good mixed with some evil. So that is the knowledge of good and evil. When he started doing that, a little bit of sin, a little bit of righteousness, you know, like that. Sin a little and go to church on a Sunday. Hallelujah. Good to come, but evil to Jola. <laughs> Give Jesus a big hand. No, you're a new creation. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. So the, the Lamb of God, Jesus as the Lamb, came to take away that sin where we were born under the lordship of Satan in the natural. Because our forefather, Adam, committed high treason. And he changed lordships. And so the nature of Satan came into Adam. And the nature came into everyone who was born after Adam, even though he was spirit, soul, and body. Because he didn't feed on life, and he feared on a little evil, Everything that he ate was evil. And so it polluted his spirit and he got separated from God. And Jesus came to bring us back under the Lordship of Christ and deal with that sin. One sin. Pay the price of the sin where you are under the Lordship of the devil. Number two. The old man, or fall, fallen first creation. <coughs> Excuse me. He came to deal with the old man. Who's the old man? 
the old man is Adam and your natural bloodline that came out of Adam to give you a new bloodline. That natural bloodline has got curse in it, has got sickness and disease in it. And the natural bloodline got failure. And that old creation represents your old life, the life you, you lived before you got saved. And that life he came to put away. We see this in Romans 6, 6, knowing that our old man, see there's an old man and there's a new man. You must know that as a Christian. The old man is the life you lived before you were saved. The new man is, is the Christ man. The old man is the Adamic, first Adamic life. Adam's life which was of the earth. The new man is the last Adam, which is Christ, who is the last man from heaven. He came to put away that old man of the earth. The old man that's dominated by the outside. The old man that is dominated by lust of the flesh. The old man that's dominated by lust of the eyes. The old man that's dominated by pride of life. He came to put that one away and to bring forth a new creation of righteousness, right standing. Your old man is crucified with him. Can you see that? With him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. <coughs> Jesus Christ came... <coughs> To deal with the flesh man. That same flesh in your body. That troubles you so much. To make you a spirit man. He came to deal with a body of sin. Why? So you don't have to serve the dictates. You don't have to rev this flesh up. Because if you rev the flesh, the most spiritual person will get controlled by lust. So you understand how lust works. Lust works with your eyes. Pornography. What you see. It looks good. It revs you up. So now what? You are righteous. So you reckon yourself dead to that now. And when you see some people dressing like that, just close your eyes and say, I'm dead to that. Because the Bible teaches that women in the house of God and in the world must dress modestly. The Bible teaches that. So you don't dress to show your body. You, you dress in a modest way. Because some men Stupid men, none of you all. <laughs> but some stupid men, they like it when another man admires their wife's body. Hey, keep your wife for your bedroom. Don't get your wife to come parade for other men here. Yeah, this is not that type of thing, the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Are you here this morning? In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. So the old man, he came to take that old man, the fallen man. And so that's why Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. He says, I'm dead. I'm dead. But he says, nevertheless, I live. But it's not I. Christ lives within me. You can't tempt a dead person. You can't rev a dead person up. How are you going to live a dead person up? But you see, if you haven't died with Christ through your faith, Pastor Dale shared it lovely, that your faith doesn't only have the ability to go into the future, it also goes into right to where the crucifixion of Christ took place. And it links you to that. And you say, that part of me is dead. I'm not feeding into that no more. 
I'm feeding to live for God, living for a new man, living for Christ, living through Christ. Then number three, Christ dealt with the world systems. And later on, we will go into details with these things for you. This world is adorned by systems that govern the systems. That's why in the Bible says, love not the world. It's not saying don't love creation because God loved his creation. He loved the world. But there is a system of corruption that governs creation. Those systems, Christ dealt with them. That's why we have to be very careful that you're not importing the systems of the world that got no life in them, that got death working in them, and you bring them to work it in the church. The church is not your business. The church is not big conglomerates of the world. Our relationship is of life. Even when you make your mistakes, you don't get fired from being a Christian. It's harder in the church. Because if I'm governed by systems, I will say, like what Donald Trump's movie was, you fired. <laughs> you cannot exclude the included in the church. But be careful, don't include the excluded. So we bear with one another because you get some naughty Christians, you know. But you get wise as you're going on in life. You, you know the real, and you know the fake. You ought to be spiritual enough to be able to see what is real and what is fake. So he dealt with the world system. Galatians 6 verse 14. But God forbid that they should glory. I don't glory in that systems. Save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ There's, by whom the world is crucified so when Christ hung on the cross he took the same systems that were destroying people making the rich richer at the poor's expense because that's that system the rich people pay less for goods and services the poor people pay more for goods and services and Jesus came to deal with that and he 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 dealt a death blow for those systems to work here in the house of God he says the world is crucified to me so when when the world systems is crucified what it means it's dead don't build with that which died. Because if you build with that which died, you become a transgressor. So does it mean we don't have systems? We do have systems. But our systems is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is our systems. Not systems without life. Not systems to measure people's productivity and behavior. We, we do, we do, uh, we are accountable. We want productivity. We want to measure our, our progress, 100%. But we, we, that's not our Lord. Our Lord is Jesus, hallelujah. That even when I fail, I can run to him. Come give him a hand if you're clapping. Number four, Christ dealt with the devil. So you cannot build with what the devil's doing. You understand what we say? Don't build your life with what Christ destroyed. Now, Colossians 2, verse 14 and 15, it says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Christ blotted out some things that were against us. Handwriting of ordinances. The ordinances of the law. He, he, he blotted it out. It was contrary to us. He took it out of the way. nailed it to the cross. And what does it say? 
having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So when he was dying on the cross, he was defeating the devil. That when you come to the end of yourself, you're in the beginning of what God can do. When you come in the end of your ability, you're only starting with what God can do. When you're weak, then you're strong. Because your confidence is not in the flesh. Hallelujah. The devil is destroyed. Don't build your life with what was destroyed. It doesn't matter how nice it is. The devil will take you, your children, and family out. Suddenly, bang, sword of Damaclus fell. What happened? You fiddle around. I don't want to fiddle around. No. Life is too precious. Victory is too precious. Our long life is beautiful. Health is wonderful. Prosperity is wonderful. Peace is wonderful. And so I'm not building with the devil. Don't build your life with the devil. You build with what Christ gives you to build, not what he destroyed. Number five, he, just, he took out of the way the ordinances of the law and the religious systems. You see, not only are they systems in the world, but they systems of religion as well. And when we get caught up with religious systems, we make the word of God of no effect in our life. And so Ephesians 2 verse 14 says, For he is our peace, who made both one. You see, there's the Jewish religious systems, and there's even unbelieving religious systems. All religions got their systems in them. You go to any, even Christianity, even Pentecostalism and charismatic systems. We got systems. And sometimes you can be so involved in a system, but you never ever met Christ in it. No life of Christ. The whole thing, standing, sitting, standing, sitting, raising your hand, sprinkling water on you, burning incense on you you walk out and you even think the smell of the incense is Christ you think that the water is holy then us Pentecostals we even start uh, charismatic we even start selling the water all those are religious systems we want to stay pure with Christ we want to stay pure with the pure undiluted Word of God because when the rubber hits the road it's this that will keep you Water can't keep you. Smoke can't keep you. We got a smoke machine, yeah? That's just to create. You know what vu vu means. But it's not Christ. You know, it's not Christ. We just want to make the young people feel lucky like that, you know. But it's okay. But it's not Christ. Don't think that smoke is Jesus now coming out there. No, or the lights. Not Jesus, eh? We love Jesus. Say, I love Jesus. Yes, say, Jesus is my Lord. Yes, that's what you are staying with. And so he's our peace who made both one and had broken down the middle wall of partition between races, between Jews and Gentiles, and even between one another, colors and Indians, and colors and blacks, Indians and blacks. <laughs> ah. I'm looking like a Greek, but I, I'm an African. What's wrong with you? You think because you're black, you're the only African? No. I'm a brown African, too. And you get some white Africans, too. Hallelujah. Why? Because we are one race. God broke all that down. And stop, stop, stop worrying about your children. Hey, I must leave this church because you know they got a lot of black people here and maybe my daughters will marry you'd be surprised how some people think like that Amen. 
I just want an Indian church, you know. Why don't we sing Indian music here? Well, I'm going to look for a church where they, they sing some Indian songs now. You see what's happening with this thing? It'll, it'll destroy you. Because now you are no build with what Christ destroyed. And so God must deal with these things in our heart. I don't see a, a, a race. Honestly, I, I don't, when I meet somebody, I'm not thinking, hey, this child's a black child, this child is a colored child, this child is, a, is, <laughs> is an Indian child. No, I don't see people like that. My mind is Christ. I have the mind of Christ. The color of the flesh is just the color of the house. And I come to see that black is beautiful. Black is elegant. That's why I bought a black Mercedes. I like black. Tell me something. A white Mercedes is like a black Mercedes? Nah. Too many people got white. You pull up with a black and shine, especially in these modern colors. Ooh, Jesus. Come back in. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make himself of two, twain, one new man, a Christ man. One man is a Christ nation. And so we are all different, but we are all members of one man. One man, say one man. Say Christ man. Christ nation. Yeah. You must understand Jesus came to abolish that. Now don't build with that. Don't build with that. Racism is one of the worst things to build your life with. Worst thing. It's, it's wicked from the pit of hell where you grade people. Don't ever, ever treat someone who is in the image of God and put grades upon them. It's all one people. All one people. You don't think your group is exclusive. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross. The cross reconcile, puts to death all that and brings all into one body. And having slain this fight, enmity, thereby this division amongst one another. Slayed. Don't build on it ever again. Don't talk it. Don't think it. Don't build it. Because it makes you a transgressor. Are you receiving something on this Good Friday? The three pillars of religious ordinances of the law are number one, keeping the Sabbath. Jesus came to do with that away. Our Sabbath is our Sunday. In fact, our Sabbath is Christ. He's our rest. Number two, circumcision. In the Old Testament, the seal of the covenant, the sign of the covenant was circumcision. I don't know why the women were not included in that. So, like they left out of the covenant. So the men only must get their flesh cut off. But, but circumcision in the new covenant the flesh gets cut off from your heart. The knife of God goes into your heart, pierces the heart, and takes the excess flesh of lust and pride out of the Garden of Eden. For your heart is your Garden of Eden. And that's why God, when you get saved, gives you a garden on the inside that will produce for you. He gives you a new spirit which is not your heart and then he puts his spirit within you that his spirit will intermingle with your spirit so that you can work the heart to be a production center for your life producing good things to come out of your heart so paul says about seven minutes to close you glad you came to church Listen to a schooled ballet. Listen to a father. One who knows these things. Not a novice. 
someone who understands these things because if you watch the outcome of people's lives you will learn a lot a lot will learn a lot if you just watch the outcomes of people's lives you learn a lot hallelujah so Christ uh, Paul says I'm crucified with Christ so what did that mean he says the I came to an end your life came to an end a sinful life a careless life a sexual life a lustful life life all that died it came to an end I'm crucified with Christ nevertheless I live but it's not I I'm living but it's not that I who died I don't have dual natures in me that nature died I have a Christ nature in me I have to ask myself would Christ do this what I'm doing and if Christ wouldn't do it I wouldn't do it Christ my standard Christ is my plumb line Christ is your plumb line Christ is your life so you in the image of Christ nevertheless and the life that I now live in this flesh I do have flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me in the last five or six minutes and I'm going to pray for you on this Good Friday we see this in Luke 17 where God speaks about faith as a seed and faith as a servant we see that when you come to chapter 18 and I close with that there's another parable about prayer because you can say without praying and get the results you can pray with saying and also get the results so the life of faith governs how you speak and how you pray which is also how you speak so Jesus gives this parable he says men ought always to pray and not to give up not to faint men ought always to pray you got it there washing men ought always to pray Luke chapter 18 and verse 1 let me wait for you son you came back a bit late last night but we'll we'll shake you up on the journey men men ought always to pray and not to faint Luke chapter 18 verse 1 not on my notes but men and he spoke a parable unto unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint that's why you need understanding ought always to pray you always must say because when you say you plant your faith when you say you instruct your servant faith so men ought always to pray because when you pray you say and you mustn't faint don't ever get tired of living by faith that's what that means don't ever stop living by faith faith is a lifestyle you live by faith 24 7 go to sleep by faith too get up by faith when you go to bed at night you release your faith and instruct your faith about a good night's sleep instead of putting the alarm on tell your faith I'm getting up early tomorrow because the earliest worm catches the fattest worm earliest bird catches the fattest worm the next one verse 2 Luke 18 verse 2 saying there was in a city a judge 
which feared not God, neither regarded men. Verse 3. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. This woman came to a judge who did not fear God. He did had no regard for men. And he says, as a judge, I got some enemies. Can you deal with my enemies? And the next verse, and he would not for a while. But afterwards, he said within himself, though I fear not God, no regard men. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Next one. And the Lord said, Jesus is talking this parable. Hear what the unjust judge said. Understand. Hear and understand what the unjust judge said. This unjust judge did not fear God, had no regard for man, but a widow woman had an enemy. And the widow woman's coming to this judge. This widow woman is saying to the judge, avenge me. In other words, help me here and fight this battle for me. And Jesus says, and the judge says, I, I don't want to do it. But because she's keep on coming back, keep on coming back, keep on coming back. She's going to make me tired. I'd rather just do it and get done with it. And Jesus says, hear this unjust judge. And then he brings God to compare. So one hand you have an unjust judge who doesn't answer prayer. An unjust judge who wants you to keep wearing him down and even palming a little bit here and there. I'm adding that one. And then he fixes it up for you. Because you troubled him too much. But Jesus hear that. And he says, now look at God. And shall not God avenge his own elect, his chosen ones, which cry day and night unto them, though he bear long with them. Why is he bearing long with them? Now most Christians interpret that he's like that judge who doesn't want to answer prayer. I never in 43 years heard anyone sharing what I'm sharing with you. They always use this parable and speak, you must pray till you get a breakthrough. Pray the whole night. Pray day and night. Push it, baby. Push, push, push. You feel the pain? Push it. Give birth to this thing, man. God has been bearing a long time with your push, push business. Why? Why is he bearing? You haven't even pushed it out yet. All those intercessory prayers, you're still as poor as a church mouse. You still haven't got your husband, you still haven't got your wife. You still haven't, you, you still just messed up. But I'm, I'm inter you know what? If intercessory prayer like that could make people rich, Africa will be the richest continent in the world. Because there's no people that pray like Africans. Pray the whole night. And they feel they've done something so good. But they never got the answer. Because they wrongly interpreted the scripture. And their pastors wrongly interpreted it. Why am I saying it's wrongly interpreted? Because the very next verse tells us. And I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. So what is he saying? He's saying the unjust judge is, doesn't do it speedily. The unjust judge, you gotta keep coming, keep coming till he gets tired of you wearing him. Then, because you're troubling him, he'll just do it, he'll just do it for you. 
And because the unjust judge is like that, we think our God is like that. We think the things that God died for and the things he lived for, he'll take a long time to release it to you or to take your problems away from you. Because we've been taught wrongly that God is like this unjust judge. I want to ask you, can you lift your hand if you were taught like that? Don't tell lies now. You're in the house of God. If you were taught like that, you must keep praying till you get your breakthrough. No. Come on, lift up your hand, you liars. <laughs> you all were taught like that. But Jesus is saying, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. God wants to do a new thing. A quick thing for you. Where your prayers were not being answered, they're going to get answered quickly. God wants to give you a 24-hour miracle. God wants to give you an immediately in your life. Because this is what Jesus says, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith in the earth? Because you're not living by faith, your prayers are not being answered. Because you're not talking by faith, your prayers is not being answered. And Jesus is saying, God wants to do quick things for you. Quick things. Things that were taking a year, five years, ten years, can be an immediate turnaround for you. Your debts can get cancelled immediately. Your sick body can be healed immediately. God will never hold back for you what Jesus Christ died for. If God had to be like that, he would be an unjust judge. It's using a judge because a judge brings judgment. God is also a judge. But he's a just judge. He brings judgment on your adversaries. What are your adversaries? Your adversaries are those things that Jesus destroyed. That are still popping up their head. Sickness is still popping up. Jesus wants to do it now by his life. If you will do it by faith. If you'll get this thing right and believe that God does things immediately. God does it immediately. He moves at the speed of light. You got to learn how to move in the Holy Ghost. Move with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Shh, it's done. Gee, my faith took it, me right back to the cross. It's done. No law is going to condemn me. No ordinances, no devil, no flesh life. All that is done away with. When I'm in the spirit, I am the voice of God. When I'm in the spirit, heaven's shores are trod. So Lord, help me walk in the spirit. Lord, help me live in the spirit. Because when I'm in the spirit, he is glorified in me. I close with this. John 3, 13. And I'm going to get onto my bicycle to go to Swaziland. And you're going to go to your home. Don't you go and eat without faith. You must eat in faith. Everything you drive in faith. Do everything you do. Anything that's not of faith is sin. When you step out of faith, you step into sin. So that's why we're dealing with this key. That you've got to live by faith 24-7. The way you need to breathe 24-7. You even got to sleep by faith. Faith doesn't sleep. Faith can work for you while you're sleeping. Faith is your seed. It can grow while you're sleeping. Faith is your servant. can work for you. Look at this. Look at it clearly. No, Jesus said this. What I'm teaching you is the things Jesus taught. In case you think, oh no, this is not what Jesus taught. No, this is what Jesus taught. He says, and no man has ascended up to heaven. 
But he that came down from heaven, he lo ovele zuluin, we ain't a pearl. Katege zuluin, what's the gawar buyagla, unkulunkul. Even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Come look at it, because your religious mind is, is telling you it's time, the service is over now. I'm going home, I'm going to do shopping. And what are we going to eat for lunch? No, it's the most important time for you this now. Because I'm helping you. Say, help me, Dad. Say, help me, Bishop. Yes, say, help me, Pastor. Say, I need help in that. My, my prayers haven't been answered that I've been praying. Hmm? My prayers haven't been answered. I want them answered, Lord. You said you're a prayer answering God. You said if I call on you, you will show me great and mighty things that I know not of. You said, Lord, if I pray according to your will, I know you hear me. And if I know you hear me, I have the petitions that I've desired of you. You said, Lord, whatever I pray, believing I receive, I have it. Hallelujah. Lord, you said it. I believe it. I say it. I believe it. I pray it. Because you said it, and it's your word, it can never fail. And you gave me a servant to work this thing. You've been working the world system too long. It's time to work the kingdom system. Look at it again. Come praise and worship team. Look at that scripture. No man, Jesus is saying here. Remember he's speaking about Nicodemus. He's speaking to Nicodemus. He's talking about being born again. He's talking about being born of the Spirit. He's talking to us today that we are this new man. We are this Christ man. We are many-membered body of this man. And he says, no man ascended up into heaven except he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So Jesus is saying, I came from heaven to earth. I'm on the earth here. You're looking at me. But I am in heaven at the same time as I'm on the earth. And that is what the cross finally came to accomplish. The cross came to take away the gap between heaven and earth. That you, because that gap is only being caused by sin. Sin caused that gap. And that gap is dealt with. That heaven and earth is together. That when you're living on the earth, you are living from heaven. Right here on the earth. Like what Jesus said, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on the earth. As it is in heaven hallelujah are you receiving something you are a spirit man you're a spirit woman hallelujah you in union with God you are joined together with Father Son and Holy Spirit and I'm on the earth and my faith is doing the impossible through this intermingling with God I am changing my earth to become like heaven in the name of Jesus. I'm an instrument of change. I'm changing things around through my servant. Faith through my seed. Faith. I'm fixing it all up. Have you received something? Happy, happy.